from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Hello, I'm Frank Wright, president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. I invite you to download our ministry smartphone app. You can watch all of our programs, as well as access daily devotionals, Bible versions, and evangelism training materials. Just go to the App Store for your mobile device and search for D. James Kennedy Ministries. The Hollywood Reporter once posited that there are more showrunners in Los Angeles than taco trucks. That sounds like a lot of showrunners. The sudden growth of scripted television series has resulted in the burgeoning number of so-called showrunners, a position that takes charge of every aspect of the creative and business part of the show. One top NBC showrunner said, a great showrunner isn't a dictator, but at the end of the day, somebody's got to have the final word, and that's the showrunner. What about our lives, this world and all of history? Who is in charge and who has the last say? Here is Dr. D. James Kennedy in his classic message, Who is Running the Show? And now may we hear the word of God as it's found in the second psalm. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. And may God bless to our hearing and our living the reading of his word. Amen. Who's running the show? Is there anybody in charge? Or is this world completely out of control? Like a Roman chariot where the rider has been thrown from the chariot and the horses are running wildly who knows where while the reins flap in the breeze. That, unfortunately, is the view that many people have of this world, that everything is mere happenstance and chance, and who knows why there's no reason or meaning to any of it. Ambrose Bierce, in The Devil's Dictionary, where the satanic view of things is set forth, says in this dictionary history, Noun, an account mostly false, of events mostly unimportant, 
about kings, mostly knaves, and soldiers, mostly fools. Well, that doesn't give one a very comforting view of where the world is going. To most unregenerate people, the the world, as they look in vain for some kind of pattern, seems to generate nothing but the view that there is no pattern at all. But to those of us whose eyes have been opened by faith, who have put on the spectacles of Scripture, we see the world quite differently. Rather than, as even the ancient Greeks did, in seeing a meaningless repetition of cyclic reiteration, as C.S. Lewis called it, where there is no rhyme nor reason to anything, we see rather that history is his story and that it is not a book without a plot, but a book whose plot is very clearly writ in Holy Scripture and the focus of it all is on Christ and his cross. Very different than the view of the skeptic H.G. Wells, historian and science fiction writer, Wells said that the world is like a great stage production produced and managed by God. And as the curtain goes up, all is beautiful and lovely to behold. The characters are fantastically beautiful or handsome, and everything is going along very beautifully until the leading man steps on the hem of the dress of the leading lady who falls over a chair and knocks over a lamp that pushes a table into the side scenery and that wall and the back wall and all come crumbling down while God rushes back and forth shouting orders frantically but unable to bring anything in the form of order out of the chaos. And this, I'm afraid, is a view that many people have if they believe in God at all. He's obviously a God who is not up to the job. But go in through that gate with me and look at all of the sin and the suffering and the weeping and the wailing and the gnashing of teeth and the lamentations. And you will discover that it is precisely because God is both good and all-powerful that such a place exists. If it were, if he were not good, then the sinful rebellion of mankind would make no difference to him. If he were not all-powerful, then surely all of these condemned men would ris- have risen up in rebellion to overthrow the force of his government. But they do not, and they cannot, for he is the omnipotent one, ruler of heaven and hell, the earth and all of the galaxies, from the greatest spiral galaxy to the tiniest atom. God is the sovereign ruler over all. Listen to some of the things that the God of nations, the sovereign ruler of this world, tells us in his word. He says this, that his sovereignty extends to the greatest of the nations, and the nations are but as the dust in the balance to him, and they amount to little at all, that he is a sovereign ruler over all things, He sets up one and casts down another, and he raises the basest of men to rule over nations if it pleases his will. And I think that we as Americans would certainly know that that has sometimes been true. I'll let you fill in your own blanks there. I'm not going to do that. He further says that he will cast out the nations before thee, And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. And I will provoke them to anger before you. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. The wicked shall be turned into hell, 
and all nations that forget God. Just consider some of the ways that God has revealed his sovereignty in nations, and you can see that this is his story, that he is accomplishing his perfect will of redemption for mankind. Remember when he brought Abraham out of Ur the Chaldees into Canaan, and there he established his people and the twelve sons of Jacob. But seeing that a great famine was coming, what did he do? He put into the mind of the aged father to give a technicolor coat to his favorite son. Now, unfortunately, his brothers became envious and exercising their fallen and sinful nature, they first cast him into a pit, intending to kill him, and then they sold him into bondage in Egypt. Potiphar bought Joseph for the purposes of his own aggrandizement. Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce him according to her own unfaithful and sinful nature. He was lied against, cast into prison, lifted up again, became the prime minister of Egypt, gathered together the food, and when the famine came on all of the earth, he brought food to the peoples of the world. And when his brothers came down to Egypt seeking food and recognized who he was when he revealed himself to them, he said to them, Ye meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, to save many people alive this day. So the sovereign hand of God saved his people alive. And then years later, having exercised his sovereign power and bringing Pharaoh to his knees and making him release the people from their bondage in order that people know that, might know that he is the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah of hosts, when the people went out. When you have a parade of people, let me ask you, what do the dogs do at such a sight? They bark their heads off, right? But that ye may know that it is the Lord God that bringeth thee out, not a dog shall wag his tongue or bark against thee, shall not open his mouth against thee. And every dog was silent as three millions of Israelites paraded through Egypt. And then arriving in Canaan and setting up the 12 tribes in their appropriate areas, he demanded that three times a year every man and every household and every tribe come up to Jerusalem for the particular celebration. Every man and every tribe. And there was not a single tribe that didn't have around or near it hostile enemies very eager to take that land away from them. But God said that he would make it so that during those three festivals of a year that not once would it enter into the heart of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and all of the other ites that were there. Not once would it enter into their hearts to desire your land while all the men were gone And there was nothing there but women and children. They were totally vulnerable. And year after year, century after century after century, this went on, showing the sovereign hand of Almighty God. We move on hundreds of years later, and we see that God has promised to Micah that it was out of Bethlehem that would come forth this one whose goings forth were from old, from everlasting, who was going to be the Messiah. But the Messiah was conceived almost a hundred miles away in Nazareth to the north. And the gestation moved on and she was now within a day or two of conceiving, of bearing the child which she had conceived. And the Messiah was going to be born in the wrong city. And the prophet was going to be proved wrong. And the scriptures were to be refuted because the prophecy had failed. 
But far away, a thousand miles or so, on a great throne chair in Rome, Caesar Augustus had an idea. Where did that idea come from? That all the world should be taxed. And so he signed a decree. And he must have sat back in his throne chair and thought, I sign my name, I speak the word, and all over the known world people scurry around in obedience. And far away, unbeknownst to him, a lowly carpenter and a lovely maiden mounted on a donkey made their way southward over hills and valleys with the unpleasant experience of almost giving birth to a child. They did not know that behind them as they moved inexorably southward, the invisible hand of Caesar Augustus was moving them onward and downward to fulfill the prophetic utterance of God. And Caesar on his throne did not know that behind his invisible hand there was an infinitely greater invisible hand that was moving him to do what he had done. For surely it is God who reigns in the affairs of men. He is a sovereign ruler of nations. And he placed a Christian Caesar on that throne of Augustus 300 years later. And Christianity spread throughout Europe. And one day, a thousand two hundred years later, a very discouraged navigator by the name of Christopher Columbus was returning to Italy, completely downcast because he had been rejected again in his attempt to see the king and queen. In that providence of God, he stopped by a monastery to get a drink of water. And there, the monk who gave him the water saw how discouraged he appeared and entered into conversation with him, and he told him his story. And the monk said, let me go with you and introduce you to a friend of mine that might be able to help you. Queen Isabella. Chance or providence? We believe it was the hand of God who ruleth in the affairs of men. And so when this nation was established, when they came together to write the Constitution, you remember the chaos that reigned. Large states against small and small against large, arguing day after day after day and getting nowhere, till finally the elder statesman among them at 81 years of age, Ben Franklin, stood up and address the chairman of the meeting, George Washington, with these famous words. I have lived long, sir, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs of this truth I see, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his knowledge, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And he exhorted them to have various clergymen come and open their deliberations with prayer. And from that moment, success came and our Constitution emerged because truly God does rule, God does govern in the affairs of men. Dear one, he is the sovereign God, the Lord Almighty, who governs every single thing from the tiniest to the largest. He is the Lord of our lives, and therefore he is one that we should not take lightly. Behold, said Paul, the goodness and the severity of God. And too often we forget that the punishment of God is very real, as many have and many others will discover. 
And if you, my friend, are here today and you have not been reconciled unto him, I would say with the Apostle Paul, I beseech you by the mercies of God, be ye reconciled unto him. How can we be reconciled to a holy God who is of pure eyes and even to look upon iniquity when we know that we are sinful, that there is none of us who has not grieved him by a thousand falls, that in thought and word and deed and omission and commission we have sinned 10,000 times, 99.9% of all of our sins we have forgotten. But God has not forgotten one of them. It is as though we were outside throwing mud at a great window where God was inside. And though we have gone ahead and forgotten that mud, when God looks at us, it's all still there. What shall wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Christ. The scripture is very plain. Our sins will be punished. The sovereign, omnipotent, holy, and just God has sworn that that will happen. The only question is, will they be punished on us us in hell, or will they be punished on Christ at Calvary? The choice is ours to make. What is your choice? Do you choose him as Savior and Redeemer, as God and King and Lord? Do you trust him for your salvation? Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. Blessed are all they that trust in him. Invite him into your heart. Place your trust in his atoning death, knowing that it was for you and your sins that he died and you will find peace for your souls. And how wondrous it is to know that the sovereign Lord God Almighty, ruler of heaven and earth, is your Redeemer and your friend. May we pray. (laughs) Heavenly Father, I pray that if there are any here who are going like foolish sheep their own way, not realizing in what danger they are, that the precipice lies directly ahead and soon precipitously they are to be plunged into an everlasting abyss and endure the sufferings of hell. Help them now while still the sunshine of grace shines upon them, that they may turn unto Christ and be reconciled unto thee, O God, saying, Come, Lord Jesus Christ, there is room in my heart for thee. Come in and cleanse me and wash me whiter than snow. Forgive me for all of my sins. I confess them freely to thee, and I accept thee as my hope, my joy, my Savior, and my God. In thy name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer with Dr. Kennedy, you are about to embark on a whole new life. And we want to be there to help by sending you, beginning again, a book written by Dr. Kennedy for new believers. In these pages, you'll learn how to pray, how to read and study the Bible, and much more. To receive your copy, simply write to the address on your screen or call our toll-free number. Be sure and ask for Beginning Again. And may God richly bless you. As Dr. Kennedy said, those of us whose eyes have been opened by faith in Jesus Christ see the world quite differently than those who don't believe. Those who are hostile to biblical truth are becoming increasingly emboldened in the arena of new media. Until recently, the Internet was at least a bastion of free speech for all. But now, online censorship of Christian and conservatives is on the rise. High-tech companies, 
run by far left progressives who are antagonistic to Christianity increasingly control the flow of information and are using that control to discriminate specifically against Christians and conservatives. Do you know how you're being affected and what you can do to restore freedom? Well, we have developed a brand new resource to help you with this. It's the new book, Just Off the Presses, The New Gatekeepers, Censoring Christians in the Digital Age. This book shows you how internet monoliths like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and YouTube are actively silencing Christian freedom. Freedom lost is seldom regained, history shows us. So it is vital that you know about this imminent threat and what you can do about it. We will send you the new gatekeepers as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free 888-332-3069. Or you can go online to djkm.org. And if you can give a generous donation of $50 or more, we will also include a two-DVD set of Dr. Kennedy's messages called Thieves of Liberty. In these key messages, he shows how there is an ongoing battle between truth and falsehood, between good and evil. And he equips you with the spiritual tools you need for the battle we see playing out all around our nation. Your generous donation will help us also finish producing and airing nationally our documentary on this issue in the month of July. If Christians can be silenced on the internet, we can be censored anywhere. Take a stand for freedom by giving us a generous donation. We will thank you for it by sending you our new book, The Gatekeepers, Censoring Christians in the Digital Age, just off the presses. And if you are able to give a donation of $50 or more, we will also include the two DVD set of Dr. D. James Kennedy's messages, Thieves of Liberty. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 888 888- 332-3069 or you can go online to djkm.org I'm Frank Wright thanks for joining us for this edition of Kennedy Classics we'll see you next time today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount please call, write or log on to our website today This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.